Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to read, we're going to look at reading slightly more complicated uh, formatted text data from a file. Uh, so let's let's right click the project here and go to new file, and I'm going to create a file called stats.txt. And let's put some data in this. So let's say something like population UK. And um, that's, I think that's about 64 million last time I checked. Let's have also population France, which is something in a region, I believe, of 64, 66,400,000. And we'll, we'll leave it there. So I'm just going to um, try to read this pretty simple um, f kind of formatted file at the moment. And we're going to try to get the numbers out of there. So if you need to do this kind of task, if you need to read a comma-separated value list or something in C++, you can do it, but um, it can be fiddly. You might want, want to consider um, using C++11 C++ and possibly the regular expression um, uh, libraries that are built into C++11. Or you might even want to consider using um, the C functions that you can use in C++, which can be quite handy for this. And you can also just switch to a different language altogether because C++ is not ideal for doing this kind of thing. There are other languages like Python and Perl that are designed from the ground up for parsing text. But you can do it. And we'll, t we'll take a look at an example here. So first of all, we need to do exactly what we've done before. We need to open the file. So let's include fstream here. And we'll have using namespace standard in there and let's create a if stream input file stream object we'll call it um, input let's open this input file I'll use a um, string to store the name let's call this file name equals stats dot text and I'll say input dot open file name now let's put a check in let's say if um, not input dot is underscore open. Well, in that case, there's, there's no point continuing, and at that point, I'm just going to return with an error code. And the error code is useful if you run this program from some sort of um, command line um, automated tool type type system. We mustn't forget to close the file, so I'll put in input dot close. Okay. Now um, let's let's try to read this information in a loop. So I'm going to say while input, and we're going to try to read this line by line. So I'll use get line. Let's let's have a string um, to to store the line in here. Let's say string line, and we'll say get line. So we're going to get line from the input into the string, and get line actually allows us to supply a delimiter and it will read up to that delimiter and then the delimiter will be thrown away. So in the stats.txt we've got colons here so let's try to read the information up to the colon. Um, so we're going to put a delimiter in here. So I'm using single quotes because we use single quotes to create a single character literal in C++ which is different to a string that uses double quotes. Um, we we, we, we also would like to get the um, would like to get the number after the colon so we'd like to get these population values here well there's there's, there's no harm in mixing get line with reading directly from the string let's create a int population here it's always going to be an int in this particular case and we're going to say input um, get from or extract from this is the extraction operator, stream extraction operator, population. And let's um, let's output what we've got. So let's say C out um, C out line and we'll have some white space in there. Let's let's have a couple of dashes and then we'll output population. And finally finally let's output a new line so we can actually and distinguish one line from the other. And let's let's run this and see how it actually looks. So I need to build it first, of course, which I forgot. Let's go to build project and uh, wait for it to build, and then we can run it. 
So what we've got here is we've got the information that we wanted, but something weird has happened. For one thing, we've got this extra population appearing down here. And for another thing, these are separated not by um, a new line. We've, we've not just got each of these bits of information on a new line, but we've also got blank lines between them. So what's going on here? Well, one, one thing that I like to do when I read a file like this is to surround the individual bits of data by single quotes because that way you can see more easily what's going on. So let's put some single quotes in here. We can use single quotes within double quotes just to output whoop, a single quote if I hit the right key on my keyboard. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make use of this. Let's copy that and then I can put one here as well. So we're surrounding line by single quotes. Let's do the same with the population here. So I can put a single quote just here and then we can have another one here. And let's see if that gives us any clues about what's going on. So if we run this now, we see that um, we're, we're fine with these bits of text that say population and then the country name. Uh, we're, we're fine with the numbers here, but, well, it, it looks like it, but then we've got this blank line here appearing. If, if Actually, if, if we look carefully at this, so this, this is okay. This, this looked okay to me at first glance, but if you look closely, what's happening is, um, so this, this single quote here is actually, it's, it's, it's actually the, one of the single quotes that are surrounding this. So what we've got is we've got a blank, a blank line, we've got an invisible um, non-printing new line character that we're reading and we're outputting it um, at the start of this subsequent string here. So that's what's happening. At the end of every blank line in the, in the text, sorry, at the end of every line in this text file, we've got an invisible non-printing new line character, which has the effect of pulling um, stuff following it on a new line. So we're, we're reading this stuff here. And then when we read this, we also pick up the, um, the non-printing new line character and um, we're, we're collecting it's part of this string. Uh, so what, what we could do there is um, we can say here, okay, there we've got the line, here we've got, um, we've got the, the number. We, we can just get um, a character, we can get the next character, whatever it is, which in this case is going to be the new line character, from that line and just discard it. So we can say here um, input.get and we, we just discard the return value of get which um, gives us the, um, that character, the new line character. So let's, let's run this, see how that looks. Now it looks a lot better. So these lines are okay, but we've got a, a malformed line here. So we've got an empty string and we've got the population of France repeated. And what's actually happening is um, when it tries to read the third line, which doesn't exist, uh, we, get, um, we get the uh, kind of an error state being set on the file input stream. It can't, it can't actually read another line, but we plow on anyway because we're not checking whether we should continue reading uh, until we go around the loop again and we check the actual input stream here. So what we really want to do is after we do get line or um, perhaps after we get the population, it doesn't really matter too much, we want to, we want to check if we've actually got an error. And we're getting the population here again because when we do this, it's just giving us the last integer that it was able to successfully read, bearing in mind it's now in an error state. What we can do is we can say if if not input, um, the, op the not operator is overloaded for file streams uh, to tell us whether they're in an error condition or not, then we can just, let's say, break the loop, finish the loop, because we don't want to carry on at that point. So now if we run this, we find that we get exactly the lines that we, that we want there. Um, now, th this, this is not ideal because um, we're doing input.get. What if there's more white space characters there or something? Uh, you know, who knows what could happen? So if, if you're using C++11, you can actually do this. We can actually say input read ws, and ws and c++11 
uh, just tells us to read whatever white space is there. So that's a little bit more of a robust solution and it gives us the right answer. So I think that's, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Um, I'd recommend trying all this out for yourself. If you're uh, not using C++11, or if you're not using it, or even if you are, one interesting thing to do is to figure out how you could clean up a line um, after getting it. So if you um, if you got a line from your file and it, and it may contain tabs or new line characters or whatever, the question is how can you remove those from that string that you just read? So if you want an extra um, kind of exercise to do here, then it's worth doing some Googling and trying to find out how to remove new lines, uh, new line characters, or let's say tab characters, or whatever you like, from a string. Um, and you learn, you learn a lot by Googling for solutions, and you'll see that there are various possible ways of doing that, depending again on your version of C++. Um, but there are, there are certainly ways that work, in, work well in C++ 98. So um, have, have a go at that if you feel like it. Invent some sort of um, format like this, some sort of formatted text file with numbers in it, and have a go at reading those and see um, if you can use some combination of the things that I've shown you here, and if necessary, other things that you'll have to Google for, to try to read the um, input successfully from that file and to pass it into actual C++ numbers. Uh, so you really learn a lot by, by doing that, especially if you uh, make up different file formats for yourself. And this, this is quite hard in C++, it's not the ideal language for it, but uh, we're looking at C++ here, so it's good to know how to do this, because sometimes you do need to do what we call parsing in C++. You need to get information like this out of a string or out of a file. So that's it for this tutorial. Until next time, Happy coding.